It's Thursday, September 26, 2024, and it's time for another episode of The Rodriguez Show. The Rodriguez Show. That's right, and I am here. <laughs> We're here in a different place. You can see it's me, and it's Reyes. What's up, Reyes? What up, what up, what up, man? Hey, and my name is Caesar, keeping it funky, fresh, and sexy since the year 1992. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we are at the Exhibit Gallery in Fullerton. They have a podcast room. It's a pretty cool spot, huh? Hell yeah, man. Jiggy. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, uh, we are recording an episode during an event that's going on right behind us. You can probably hear it in the background. Live. It is the Majestic Tour with Noah James and Cab Gnarly. Uh, they're headlining tonight and uh, the exhibit Fullerton uh, Gallery. They let us use the podcast room to interview some people while the event's going on. Hell yeah. Thank, shout out to y'all, man. This is dope. This is definitely a little bit of, of a change of scenery here. Mm-hmm. Um, being, you know, going on while the show's going on is kind of cool. Yeah. I yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's muffled enough where you can, we can hear ourselves and uh, they can probably hear us out there too. Yeah. Um, but first of all, shout out to Mondo, still recovering. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to him, speedy recovery, man. Um, we, I mean, obviously we recorded this episode like last week by the time you're hearing this. So mm-hmm. it's been a minute, but you know, he's still on the road to recovery right there. Shout out Mondo. Hugs and kisses, homie. Hugs and kisses. <laughs> so how you been, Reyes? I know we, last time you were on the show was like a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you been since then? Chilling, bro. You know, just going through the week. Um, appreciating every day. You know, every day is a blessing. Yeah. Thankful to be being, being here with, in your presence. You know, it's always it's always dope, man. Yeah. I went to uh, I went to therapy today. I have I got started going to therapy recently. Oh, for for real? Yeah, yeah. This is my third week going. How's that going? It's cool. Uh, it's like uh, with the guy. It's the first time I've gone to talk to a guy. And it's it's interesting to hear because a lot of the stuff like where I talk about, the guy's like, oh, I can relate to that. And it's like, oh, okay, so I'm I'm normal, I guess, because somebody else can, is going through the same thing. And how'd you find that guy? Uh, there's like a place that I'm going to on and off. Is It's like a therapy place where they have like students that are going to school for it. Mm. And it's like a little bit cheaper than like, you know, real like expensive therapy. For sure, for sure. So you still get to talk to somebody and and uh, it's a little bit like on the sliding scale. At the end of the day, bro, I feel like therapy and all that stuff, like it's just you having someone that's going to listen without bias. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to like not go with someone that you're like even know or anything close. I don't even think it's legal. So like, yeah, it's good to go with someone that, you know, is completely new to you for you to like just pretty much unload whatever you have in and Mm -hmm. someone that's going to just talk to you without any bias or tell you what to do or what not to do like they're just there to listen bro and and they'll give input and insight but you're never gonna find like a like a therapist that's gonna be like you need to do this they'll always be like what do you think about this or what if what if you saw it this way or that light and it just really gets you thinking you know yeah it's more about like how to how to improve here's some suggestions on how to fix what you you think your problem is or whatever yeah yeah but yeah man so i was thinking about that when i was at therapy i was thinking about the idea of like friendships and how hard it is to maintain like friendships at this age, don't you think? It's definitely it, it gets harder, and I mean, I think every year you're able to see who's worth like the effort and stuff. Not to say that people aren't worth effort, but like you know, like you start to have more, take on more responsibilities yourself, making less time for friends, and then so you gotta have to really like sit there and think like who's who's worth that that time that I do have, you know? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. um, and you just have to kind of listen to the and listen and watch the people and how they reciprocate your energy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if people are happy around you and and that shit should f- f- like fuel you. You know, like being around happy people. Yeah. And people that want your presence. No, that's true, and that, that's why it's like I learned to appreciate the people that do. Want, instead of like making an effort and having people that are like more flaky, like chasing them, just appreciate the people that are around you. For sure. Yeah. You feel it, bro. You feel the people that want to be around you. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. you feel the effort, even if it's just a text or a or a quick call or whatever it is like as you get older like that shit does mean something you know maybe when we were younger and like teenagers that's yeah. normal you're talking to everybody you're yeah, talking yeah. to everybody but now like that that quick phone call that means something bro you know yeah well damn we got deep right there. <laughs> shit i've been deep homie. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so today we're gonna talk. I'm gonna talk to a lot of the different artists that are gonna be here performing, as you can hear them in the background. And uh, yeah, man, this is gonna be another remote episode of the Rodriguez Show. Ray is gonna be coming in and out doing segments segments with me. Are you ready for this, man? Just do it to it. All right, we're gonna play some music, and then we'll be back with guests here on the Rodriguez Show. The Rodriguez Show. And we are back here on The Rodriguez Show at the Exhibit Gallery in Fullerton. And we have another special guest here, two guys sitting here with me. We got Kid Vista and Father Juan. What's up, guys? Yeah. 
What's up? Hey, Vista, you've been here on the show a lot. You're yeah. the homie. You're basically another another host of the show. <laughs> Father Juan, this is your first time. How does it feel to be on the show? Well, thank you for having me. Just got to say, it uh, feels amazing. You know, it's been an honor. It's been a dream, really, because since I've really been getting into the scene here, you guys were the very first people that I really got introduced to. And the way I really got introduced to Kid Vista was through the Rodriguez show. Oh, nice. And nice. if I really wasn't because of you guys, I would have been really met him. I oh. really to give you guys a shout out as well, Boom. really. Nice, nice. You know, but I feel, it's, I'm honored. That's how I feel. I feel honored. Thank you. Thank you, man. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Um, well, how does that feel, Vista, to hear that somebody discovered you through our show? I, I think I've heard that story a couple <laughs> times. Yeah. It's pretty cool, man. It's yeah. pretty cool. There were people, like, even after my set that were just walking up. They're like, I've heard your name a bunch of times. Yeah. They're like, I, I've, and I'm like, that's sick. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, I do a bunch of open mics at the Squire, and I've heard your name a bunch of times, but you're never there. And I was like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you definitely play unreleased music, though. At the, at the Loopers. Yeah, of, course, yeah, yeah. of course. I went to the one-year anniversary. Yeah, me I too. Me too. I was there. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> um, so how was your set? You guys just got off the stage. Vista, you just performed a couple of tracks on the project you guys have together. Yeah, so we got an album coming out in October. Uh, we don't have a set date, but probably later October called As Long As You Follow. So we did a bunch of songs off of that. Uh, we've dropped three singles, which we performed two of them. Uh, the very first song was the single we dropped tonight, too. Nice. nice. Yeah, I think people really fucked with it. People went wild when you went up there and rapped your part. Hey, thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> Very first time, really, like, really just going up there as rapper. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> kind of getting really kind of my foot in the door. Yeah. Really just kind of stayed as a producer, kind of behind the scenes. Have you always wanted to rap, or was this, like, something you just decided to do? To be honest, really, uh, the, the reason why I even got into producing was I wanted to be a rapper. I wanted oh, to become okay. rap on beats. Yeah. And at that time, I had no idea what YouTube beats were yeah. or ripping off the internet was. And so I definitely just started just making like, I'm my make. own. <laughs> How's that? I'm sorry. You just started to start making your own beats because yeah, you're like, well, I can't steal. I don't know how to steal them. Yeah, but. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I just started making them. And then um, till now, really, I have never stopped. It's been love, love, love. Really. How long have you been doing it now? Since high school. Since about like 2017, 2018. Okay. So running about like six, six, seven, years, six yeah. seven years now. Damn. Um, so, but it's been good. It's been good. Really, yeah. still like I'm glad I still kept up with my my rap my rapper side or my my lyric side. Really, it's yeah. definitely been an honor really to have be on a track with really, yeah. I've got Kibista. I've got some other songs that he raps on like in the vault. Nice. You know, you'll hear more of him coming. Yeah, I'll definitely pop out more. Dude. <laughs> that JTF project on the way. Mystery project though. Yeah. On the way, on the nice. way. I definitely yeah. got myself so on in addition well. to that, too, there's another mystery project you're talking about? Um, that's This is going to be my own. This is going to be my own. Oh, damn. Definitely. Just Juan the Father exclusives. Yeah, you yeah. Know, bait, really. Uh, so, so yeah, so is that is your back. goal, Juan, is to just you continue to create like your own projects or just to diversify and work with a lot of people? Well, really, a lot of it, really. But mainly, mainly is really just kind of kind of getting out experience learning kind of getting out the getting my foot in the door really experiencing what it was to really make music really because i didn't know what it was to uh have an interface at that time really until kid vista introduced me to an interface and recording and really what it was to actual like the process of it yeah and so i definitely still got a lot more to learn but my goal is just to learn a lot more and to let me a lot of more creatives on the scene you know just like no, no limit kid crave yeah. Uh, classified they're all homies you know shout out to looper squad so definitely want to expand more and just grow creatively with the squad we got going on right now nice that's dope yeah vista are you this generous with your like time with everybody do you teach everybody how to do no you have to see something in, in juan to show them all this stuff huh yeah you know i don't really like people man <laughs> <laughs> you know, like i don't really like people but no nah, juan's the homie and he's always just been a real one since like he just randomly hit me up on instagram so you know we yeah. actually we run sessions like just about every week at this point yeah. we're like every weekend or maybe like a monday we'll link up and just cranking stuff out nice nice yeah so, so you said mystery project when when is that coming out you, or when do you think it, it, it by the end of this year fall of 25 really oh fall, fall of 25 fall of 25 yeah okay. we got <laughs> dude, yeah we got we got to cook it up we're cooking it up okay. now <laughs> we definitely got a, a track with eddie and audi also with speak uh, already in the vault, locked nice. and loaded and ready. Speak, also with uh, Y2 Reels, also locked and loaded, ready to go. The homie. Yeah, Speak, that's that's a dope rapper, man. Shout out to that. How did you start, How did you connect with him? Oh, definitely, really just with IG. Yeah. Uh, really, that's how I connect with everybody. 
Nice. But nice. definitely got a track with him coming soon. Yeah, oh shit. Vista, what about you? I know you're always uh, well, keep us updated on the release schedule now. I got next? this album, man. <laughs> this album is really what I want to push right now. Yeah. Um, outside of the first three singles, we've got what ten more songs that drop with the album itself. Thirteen. Uh, trying to get music videos. Really push this. Get some merch. Hopefully, we got another EP in the in the vault. But whether or not it comes out anytime soon or not, who knows? Yeah. I got a bunch of shit with a bunch of people, but you know everything's just for the. For the right moment. Yeah, as a, the flow. And sometimes they just end up on my phone, you know? Sometimes you guys don't get to hear them. <laughs> he might get to hear them. I send yeah. him stuff Thank sometimes. You. I've heard a lot of them. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. <laughs> and then today you had a guest performance from somebody. because You had told me that this track was hard to finally finish. Huh? Yeah, finally. dude. Um, it is. Well, it was going to be the very last song on the album, but then we made another one, and I was like, this feels more appropriate as the very end. So it's the second to last song or the 12th song, but I sent this fucking song to... I don't know how many different people I had told you I sent it to. Many. Yeah, many. Just, we'll just we'll leave it at many, but eventually the homegirl Monet from a hard drive pulled up. She laid her verse down, and it it just worked. Nice. And this, we had not rehearsed it. We had not fucking run it together once before going up there other than, like, doing it in the home studio. But I feel like it vibed really well. I feel yeah. like we had good stage chemistry. Yeah, it was great. It was great. It was, it was a, a great time. Uh, well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'm excited for everything Always, you guys man. got coming up. Fall 2025. <laughs> I've already put it in my calendar. We already put it down. We already put it down. Let's go. Uh, Kid Vista and Father Juan Woo! on The Rodriguez Show. Thank you, guys. Beep, 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 thank you for having beep, me. Beep, thank beep, you. And I have another guest here, the Loose Cannon. What's up, man? What's going on, brother? I'm doing fantastic today. Yeah. I hope you're doing the same, man. What's going on? I'm doing great, man. And You just, you just finished your set, which is really dope. Is the pressure off now after you're done with your set? The pressure of being an artist is showing up on time, being prepared and all of that. I was maybe 10, 15 minutes late yeah. uh, for good reason. I was making the salsa. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yes, the pressure is definitely gone. I'm driving over here and I'm like turning off my nav because it keeps telling me how long. And I know that whatever time it says I'm late. I'm just like, all right, bro, eyes on the road, drive mm -hmm. safe, get here. It's going to be smooth. I chopped one song off in order to fit in my time slot, but yeah. it's all right, man. I got my songs off and I got to perform. My first time performing with, uh, I have one song with a feature out of all my like two dozen songs, whatever I got out. Yeah. So it was a uh, amazing feeling to be able to perform with the homies Crave, Bravo, No Limit, super cool. Yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah, I mean, and then so uh, one of the first songs I've ever saw you perform I think last year it was uh, Rap More. Um, and that feels like, based on like your performances and how you talk about the song, like that was like a shift in your in your career. Does is, is that really like get into that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So that was a sum it's a summertime thing, I believe. If yeah. not, maybe it was a Thop Fest competition. I know y'all were over there a lot. Yeah, yeah. So one of those uh, instances, um, Rap more. I was just on uh, No Pressure podcast with the homies out in Moval. I drove out there and they were asking me like at what point it clicked. And I would say rap more is that. I was making music a little bit before, a collab project, some stuff on SoundCloud. But rap more, I felt like I did something and then I looked at it. I was like, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't see it when you're in. I take a step back. I looked at it afterwards. I still listen to it here and there. And I was like, that's that's the direction. That's the start. That's the first brick in the road. Yeah, yeah. And being able to rap on beats that I want and uh, work exclusively with like one producer. I think collaborating is great, but oftentimes too many people, too many ideas. It's got to be, you got to be very intentional and precise. Yeah. And so just me, the homie Ari, shout out Ari, uh, seven songs, different beats that he produced, just me and him in the room. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the greatest art doesn't have all of the extra flares it's just one or two people doing their thing and not getting lost in the extras or aesthetics and everything you know nice yeah that's definitely a, it's a great song and uh, another thing that you touched on in this performance was the fact that you just uh, released or you're gonna release a project with uh, the same people you had mentioned right yeah so uh, September 3rd September came out already. yeah, September yeah. 3rd. so Got we it, just yeah. dropped it this is our first time performing together and performing any of those songs and very grateful for that opportunity because I've seen the power of collaboration this year. Yeah. And I met Bravo um, probably last year at the same event, same time that we connected. Yeah. 
but we reconnected at a something dope past the ox event that was on a thursday the following tuesday we had a session bravo no limit crave and uh you can sense it right off the bat yeah. either, either it's real or it's fake either it's good or it's not and it was good so it was like yo next tuesday yeah next tuesday yeah so we did that for like six weeks Sheesh. got like 12 songs done and yeah. um collaboration doesn't always work and some things have a shorter timeline and some things have a longer one and one of the things that i've tried to understand and remind myself as an artist is allow things to run their course yeah don't get so caught up on how long it takes or who's involved maybe things aren't ideal write it out come back the next session uh if you didn't have bars if you didn't like the beats it's not that deep yeah. you know what i mean in the power there's going to be the give and take in the collaboration mm. and um it's only going to make you as an artist and as a person stronger and wiser and so i'm, I'm very proud of the songs that we made and i really feel like i pushed them and vice versa with their pen and with their delivery and not like hey that shit's not good enough but i crave gets in the booth first and lays something down i'm like yeah. i have to do better than that yeah not like i'm better or worse than him but if everyone is trying to top each other we are all going to perform at a different level You're all elevating yeah that we wouldn't have otherwise mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so yeah. uh very appreciative of that they all encourage me and force me to to push my pen and to you know do my best and uh shout out shout out no limit b temple crave nice. bro 562 yeah at, at this point at this point in your in your music career you know you've done a, a lot of things you've worked with a few great people um what what pushes you forward like what what is inspiration um the inspiration started as seeing the average joe doing it and not the anything you could do i could do better but kind of i was like if x and y male female whatever if this person has the confidence and the wherewithal to do a little homework and put something out I for sure can do it. Mm -hmm. We're all capable, but it starts with that perspective and that belief, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, so it started with kind of looking at other people. Now it's looking at me. Everything, I'm, I'm trying to top my last record. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, next project that I drop has to top rap more, mm -hmm. but not uh, necessarily in better, just showing growth. Mm -hmm. We're all learning good, bad, and ugly each day. Some days more than others, but I want my music to be reflective of truth and of me. And there's no facade or sometimes there's concepts and stuff, but everything is me. It's how yeah. I think and how I feel. And I want to inspire thought and I want to give people takeaways, you know. So the, the feel good music and the, and the vibe stuff is is coming. But yeah. right now I got to lead in my truth and my truth who you is are, yeah. who I am. Tell it like it is make salsa rap try to sing try to improve all of that you know yeah. but it, it starts with starting so uh yeah. that's why i'm here now and and, and we are going to talk about the salsa but before i do uh and i was going to say you your music is genuine and it does connect with people that's why i've seen it every time you see i've seen you perform like people are like they're rocking with it because they understand and they can relate to the themes thank you bro well, that's cool man um so yeah this how did you come up with the name the loose cannon um long story short I, I went on a, a trip, Sister Cities, uh, in Hermosa Beach, and uh, this government program started to facilitate goodwill between countries by having, you know, Sister City for Hermosa Beach is Loreto, Mexico. I went on this adult trip. At the time, I was 24, 25, mm -hmm. going on this trip with people that are in their 60s, 70s, some of them in their 80s. I wrote an article about my trip called The Good, Bad, The Ugly. And I factually counted my experience, started with the good stuff, and then I acknowledged the bad stuff. And it was the way people were acting um, that I can tell you more about, but I, I called them out on it. And I wrote this article. I acknowledged the good, I acknowledged the bad. And one of my buddies who was very involved in community work and volunteering and stuff, reached out to me and was like hey they want you to take the article down boom 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 yeah and i was like i was just reporting what happened it's not it could have been a different article people acted differently yeah. and my buddy george is like oh it, he's like in his 80s mind you and i'm my late 20s and he's like <laughs> he's like oh lucas they think you're a loose cannon and i was i had already had music on the brain and he talks like that too so when i heard that i was it was like very i was like that clicked that was yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. a clicking moment and to, to sum it up, it is a reminder to myself to allow whatever it is that you feel and are in that moment. Yeah. You make hip hop music. Oh, so you are this. No, no, no. 
that's just one label. That's one understanding that you have of me. I also like to sing. I like to cook. I love playing basketball. Yeah. I raise chickens. I like to garden. Like Damn. so, there's. You can't just say, "Oh, I got you pinned down." No, the loose cannon. I'm gonna talk about some. I have a song called "Vices" that's unreleased, and I talk about how like being consumed in my vices affected me. And then I also have um, songs like "Jump." which is a single I dropped in 2023. And it's like, I knew what I had from the jump. And part of my my confidence in going forward with all of this stuff is because I, I know what I had. That's why I got started. Mm -hmm. I want to show myself. I want to show the world. I want to spread this music and message to people in the form of Deleuze Cannon, whatever form that it takes. You know, yeah, yeah. It might be hip hop, it might be sad, it might be up tempo, but I want to allow myself the freedom at all times, you feel me? Nice. And so that name helps me like, yeah, you, you're allowed to. Yeah. You really are allowed to. And we as people are, but the name helps me like, hey, this is all for me. This is not for anyone else. Nice. So that's that's how it, you know, the wow. canon. Uh, you're a man of a lot of talents, man. And it's, it's good to see you like thriving, whatever you're choosing to do. Thank you, bro. Um, one of the things I noticed today was the bomb salsa. Uh, Let's we get got it. the two cans right here. All right, so in my hand, we got the salsa roja. Yeah. And you got the salsa yeah. verde. verde. Yeah. So uh, we'll start with the glass jar. The United States is a leading producer in plastic waste. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna misquote it and I wish I was accurate. It's over 70 trillion metric tons. It's probably in the 80s now from when I was doing a little bit of research because I wanted to put it in glass. Everything's yeah. better in glass, not in plastic. And then I was like, hmm, what's what else matters? The United States, we're in a country where we just throw away everything. Mm -hmm. And I have this idea that, so a jar costs 10 bucks but if you bring it back, your next jar is nine. Oh, and nice. I basically discount, I, everything is at cost in terms of the packaging. I, you know, I throw it on like any business does. I'm not trying to make profit off the glass. I'm really trying to do something, a product that I believe in, that tastes good, that also has a consciousness and a uh, social responsibility yeah, yeah, element yeah. to it. You know what I mean? And uh, I actually just started in August it was a joke at first kind of oh i could do salsa for merch and i was like i love fashion bro i yeah. love shoes pants shirts other people's brands but i'm uh one of the bars from still working if i didn't go to school i would have been a chef yeah i wanted out of high school to go to culinary school yeah and it didn't rock that way and, and it's okay but that's where my heart lies i would love to open up a farm to table type gig and so being able to make salsa for merch allows me to connect with people, yeah. show them who I am. And also it's good, bro. Yeah. Like <laughs> maybe not the best salsa in the world. I'm I'm not I don't have that head that far up my rear, but it's good. All the ingredients are hand selected. Yeah. I grill them all. I, I de seed the green so it's kind of mild and uh at the end of the day, bro, everything that we do is a reflection of us and the pride we take and yeah. who we are and our craft our service that we provide or the product that we sell. And uh, I want everything, whether it's the music, the salsa, my image to be a representation of who I am and how I think. Oh. And uh, it's not about the fucking profit, dude. It's yeah. not like I keep my receipts and stuff and I want to have a profit and loss at some point. But right now it's do what you love. You're not running this show for the money for 10 years yeah, yeah. at all. Mm -mm. Be nice to make some money. <laughs> But you wouldn't have been doing it all this time if you didn't enjoy the process, connecting with different people. Like, there's the the setting up and the you know dialing in the mics and all of that stuff. But that's only a small piece of the bigger picture, and it's it's living this dream, constantly being able to, to make these tweaks and do it exactly as you want. Yeah. So that's that's the drive for the creative, whether it's the music, the salsa. And thank you for having me, bro. I really respect. Yeah. Like you said, you've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah. You've put in your 10,000 hours. Yeah. <laughs> you don't trying. need someone to tell you're an ex by qualifications, putting in the time you've reached an expert level. But you're also not done. Yeah. I'm not done. We're, we're still very young. There's a lot of room to grow and improve. And with that mindset, yeah. we're yeah. only going to get better. You know what yeah. I mean? So that 10 years, you got 50 more in front of you. Yeah. Bring up the next generation and all that yeah, shit, bro. Yeah, Real yeah. shit. People are gonna no, be like, I "Hey, that. I see you doing it. What mics are you using? How do you do this? How did yeah. you decide?" You walk people through it, and sometimes you are reminded why you do things a certain way. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, "Hey, man, it's been ten years. Maybe I'm gonna tweak this." Yeah. Little like, by little, we always learn. Hey, yeah. Little by little, we always learn, bro. Yeah. 
Damn. Well, thank you. Uh, that was really great. Really, I feel uplifted from this conversation. Uh, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Uh, where can they follow you online? Tell them what. Deluce Cannon, D E L O O S E Cannon. No funny business, just as it sounds. Deluce Cannon, The Bomb Salsa, The Rodriguez Show. Shout out Digging Daily to the homies in, in media. I like to rock merch and, you know, put on for all the homies when possible. So. Nice. Uh, thank you again, bro. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Noah James, Lisa, Brick to Your Face, Cam Gnarly, and everyone involved, man. It's a beautiful thing, man. Hey, all right. We'll be back with more on The Rodriguez Show. Yes, sir. MLE, what's up? Hello. Thank you for having me. How are hey, you doing? Great, great. You just got off the stage for your performance here at the show. Uh, how did it go? It was great. I really like this venue. It's my first time here. My homegirl Nori actually did an article on Exhibit. So I was oh, nice. super excited to perform here. I had heard about it, but never been. And, you know, being on your show and you booked me to perform here, I hit her up right away. I was like, I'm performing at Exhibit. Oh, so cool. here we are. <laughs> yeah, Thank you so for having yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they just upgraded this place. It used to be by the train station. Now they remodeled it here in a different place and they, had, they built this podcast room. So that was dope. Wow. Uh, so how do you prepare for a show like this where there's a lot of different styles of music? I always just come and do me. <laughs> I feel like no matter what kind of music scene it is, um, I kind of only had four songs released at the time. So yeah. I was just like, all I got is R&B, so this is what you're going to get. Gotcha. But now I have songs like Temperature Out, which I actually just recorded a live performance video today. That's why I have like all this eye makeup nice. on. Um, recorded that earlier today and I'm trying to like push that more because that's my new single my new sound and I can show like I'm versatile like yeah. I'm not just R&B but I show them like these are my roots this is where I started and then hey I'm multifaceted I can do these sounds too yeah. and they liked it I had R&B Afrobeats and EDM and I think the crowd really enjoyed it that's dope mm -hmm. yeah yeah there was a lot of people yeah the crowd was loving it um it was cool to show your diff different genres that, you, that you've done yeah um so yeah what are you looking forward to doing now after this are you, when are you releasing that performance video honestly i always bring my tripod i'm like pretty on top of it with recording but then i'm pretty behind on editing and posting okay. so i have like a plethora of content i just need to get it out there i'm sitting on it it's there though nice it's mm -hmm, coming mm -hmm. soon even our um radio interview i did little like video edit segments of those yeah. so those will be coming soon nice stay nice. tuned for our interview <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you want to watch the full thing it's up on youtube now mm -hmm. um okay uh so since you've already been on the show i thought it would be a fun segment to just do would you rather i have some situations here you tell me which ones you would rather okay okay all right let's do so, it uh, would you rather be forced to sing along or dance to every single song you hear? Sing. You'd rather sing along? Yeah. Of course. It's a little more subtle than, than having to dance everywhere. Yeah, I'm not a dancer like that, but I'm more confident in my singing abilities. I can groove, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, would you rather... Because we were talking about toxic cycles. Would you rather find true love today or win the lottery next year? <laughs> That's a tough one, huh? Win the lottery next year because I can find true love whenever. <laughs> That's true. No rush on the true love. I'd rather get the money. As well yes. As. All right. All right. What else? Uh, would you rather be in jail for five years or be in, in a coma for a decade? In jail for five years. <laughs> Dude, it's shorter and you're still conscious. Yeah. You get fed. You. But you, what if you did? But it's like a 10 year nap. No, you just wake up. You're like, hey, what happened? Do you know how much goes on in 10 years? Five years is half of that. You know, okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I could uh, still write letters to my loved ones, get pictures and shit. When you're in a coma, you're just... It's true. It, you're you're, you're just there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. Would you rather have a... Uh, would you rather have another 10 years with your partner, I guess, if you had, like if you had an ideal partner, mm -hmm. or a one-night stand with your celebrity crush? My ideal partner, you said? Yeah, yeah, okay, because yeah. I've been with some toxic partners, yeah, so... Yeah, like, You'd rather have a great 10-year relationship? Or <laughs> who's your celebrity crush? Only 10 years, though? Yeah. And then it ends? That's kind yeah. of a waste of 10 years, isn't it? Yeah, but... <laughs> I guess I'd go with the celebrity. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up. <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. All right, a couple more here. Would you rather be uh, chronically underdressed or overdressed? Overdress. You gotta step out 
and show out all the time. <laughs> all right, last one. Have you ever uh, have ever? Would you rather have everyone know you be able to? Re- sorry, I'm sorry. I'll cut this out. Have- <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Would you rather people have the ability to read your thoughts or know your internet history online? Um, either or, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'd say I'd say internet history because they don't always need to know my thoughts. <laughs> you can see what I looked up, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Emily. So, are you doing any performances uh, later this later this month or next month? I'm actually doing a performance in two days. Oh, nice. Um, is today Thursday? Yeah, yeah. So Saturday the 28th, I'll be performing at Long Beach Certified. Long Beach Certified. Nice. So if you're from Long Beach, pull up. I know a lot of people from Long Beach. Are you from OC? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can come too though. <laughs> <laughs> Long Beach Certified. So catch me there. Um, the details will be on my Instagram at official MLE Music. Nice. Well, thank you for hanging out with me, Emily, and I'll definitely check you out once again. Great job today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me back. Always nice to see you, and you have a great night as well. And we are back on The Rodriguez Show here at the Exhibit Gallery in Fullerton. Yes, sir. I got Reyes here. How you feeling, man? Feeling good. Feeling great, as always, bro. Checking out some of the artists performing. Yes, indeed. Lots of different styles of music. A lot of different kinds of artists, man. We're having a great time. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing we were noticing is people's fashion and how there's so many different styles here. And just in general, man, how much it's changed over the years, huh? For sure, for sure. I mean, dude, even just looking back a little bit, you know, to when we were growing up, you know, you had the rubber bands on the baggy jeans. You had the big <laughs> the, the big tees, the the big hats. And then, yeah. it went, and then it went to, like, 2010 with, like, the you're a jerk movement, like, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the... Yellow skinny jeans, oh purple skinny God. jeans, turquoise skinny jeans. They're like striped. Hell and then, yeah, and then they're tight as heck. Hell yeah, yeah. And the snapbacks, right? Oh, All oh that God. shit. The Kanye glasses with all the stripes. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, a whole decade later and we're into like a little bit baggier clothes, nude back, colors. Back how it used to be in the early 2000s. For sure. So I just wonder what's next. Like, what do you think, dude? I think what I've seen it happen more often is people dress like like the apocalypse so like it's like clothes that's like looks like it's torn and shit for sure for sure I like kind of like have. like rocker in mm-hmm. a sense like you know like big studs mm-hmm. a lot of distress yeah a lot of that stuff like uneven hems is really popular right now too for, which is kind of crazy mm-hmm. um but yeah i mean what at what age did you think like oh like did you start realizing oh i can dress myself and i can look good shit dude i mean well i started pretty early just because like I've always been into like fashion and being like the cool kid. I ain't even gonna lie, like, dude, I've always like strived for that, right? As as, as a kid, and um, I started washing my own clothes like at sixth grade because I was just like, "Mom, you're fucking up my clothes. You're putting bleach <laughs> on this shit." Yeah. So like, I think even since then, bro, like I w- <laughs> brag, you know, just drop just a little brag here. I won a uh, best dress eighth what? grade eighth grade year. <laughs> and if you look at back at that picture, I got gray skinny jeans, a, a red tee. With uh, thing one and thing two on it, oh nice, <laughs> dude! It's just like it's funny, you know. You yeah, look yeah. back, you're like, "What the fuck?" That's but funny. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, yeah, it's cool that they voted you best dress, dress though. I feel like nobody. Was this eighth grade? You said eighth grade. Oh, okay. And then from there, obviously, you start to build up your styles. And yes, of course, there's social influence. You know, like when I was coming up in high school, there was the whole shuffling scene. So mm-hmm. the button ups, the rosaries, the cargo shorts, pants. Yeah. But um, I always kept it myself too, you know. I always kind of mixed it in with like what I what 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 I like to wear, you know. Yeah, yeah I feel like I never started. I never actually put effort into it until the last like five or six years, where I was like, oh, I can really dress myself to what I want. Because I was kind of aimless before, but now that I'm like, oh, this this is what's trending, and this is what I like of what's trending. For sure, for I'm, like, sure. Like picking stuff out is fun now because it's like I like like there's a lot of stuff that people a lot of people wear. And mm-hmm. like when I wear it, people are like, "Oh, they look like not to shoot my own arm." But like, "Oh, it looks good." And I was like, well, "Everybody has this shit." I think like, I think it <laughs> depends on the person too, you know. Yeah. Like, like not everyone can rock everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Certain shit looks good on certain people, bro. Like, yeah. you know, people can s- serve certain looks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. so definitely, I, I think uh, maybe it was just you finding like, "Hey, yo, like this style kind of goes with me. I feel comfortable in it. Yeah. It it makes me feel good. I think that's the most important thing. Like when you step out, hey yo, I feel good, bro. Yeah. 
And and it, yeah, it is your confidence in how you wear the things you do. For sure. And I feel like with the long hair, it kind of helps me because fuck yeah, I used to wear shit that was like baggy, but then my head looked small with the fucking short haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like, I can't cut my hair because I have a lot of baggy clothes now. You had so that weird. police officer cut with yeah. the fucking super tight, you know, and shit. But no, dude, you I think, knew, you know how it used to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, I've I've had long hair too, and I think um, it's liberating in a sense where it's just like because you go through so many awkward stages of having long hair, you can't do shit with it half of mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of learn to like live with it and be like, you know what? I'm going to go out tonight. I'm going to look like this and that's fucking fine. Yeah. And um, I think having long hair, it like, oh, wisdom and shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Up to a certain extent, you know, like you yeah. like you learn to be un- you learn to be comfortable with the uncomfortable, mm-hmm. you know, like especially myself. Like, oh, dude, I like to be like crispy cut the whole time. Mm-hmm. Creases, steam, ironed or whatever. But when I was growing out my hair. It was a struggle, bro. Like, you're just like, oh, I hate how I feel. I hate how I look, but just push through it. Like, you know? Yeah, I hate it after I wash it to have to wait for it to dry. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I hate that shit, too. Your pillow's all wet. Mm-hmm. The, I think the best thing, though, it holds on to, like, the shampoo smell. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, oh, shit, that's Smells me. <laughs> Uh, I'm at the point now where it's like super long. I think I'm gonna have to get a haircut because it's like way too low, man. I think I'm just gonna get it cut to like where it goes down to my shoulder here, and that's it. But that's still a fucking long hair. Hell yeah, that, that's still fucking yeah, super long. You could you could like cut it a little bit and then uh, thin it out. Mm-hmm. That's when they use those scissors that like, with teeth, and they kind of just kind of you could you know Some layers. Yeah, less of a like of a pile of a, you know bundle. Yeah. Damn. All right. Well, let's get back into some music, and then we're going to get back into some more segments here at the Exhibit Gallery. Yes, Shout out to Reyes for co-hosting today with me, man. Pleasure, bro. What the hell do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back into it right now on The Rodriguez Show. Yeah. And one of our favorite vendors and our friends, Aaron from Stone Dart in the Mix is here. What's up, man? Thank you. Thank you, man. What's up, man? How you been, man? Good. It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute, right? Yeah. I know uh, definitely since, uh, you know, Noah's hit, hit the tour, we've been... Uh, been haven't been out here as much you know yeah, yeah, so it's definitely good. nice to be out here and kind of link up with everybody and you know see how everybody's doing and shit yeah it's yeah, been yeah. it's been a, a great tour have you have you done multiple stops of the tour no nah, this is actually first or second one we did oh, with okay. them i forget i think i don't know if they did an ontario stop i forget but i think we we're out there and then uh and then yeah this is the other time we're out here nice yeah nice. shout yeah. out to those guys man yeah always yeah man stuff. always always have the uh, opportunity for us man yeah. so definitely appreciate that and so, obviously, the, one of the main reasons uh, you are here as a vendor for the sweet company, Stone Dart and the Mings, that you have. How's that been going, man? How's, how's small business? Been? Honestly, man, it's, it's definitely growing, seems like, week by week. You know, my girl, uh, Christine, the Minx, she's the, the head chef, the, the head marketer. You know what I mean? So every, every little flyer you see, every new flavor she has... It's, it's all on all on her you know she's co- we're coming up with new flavors pretty much weekly nice you know we're trying to do more local shows out in the 805 and try and build that more too yeah. you know what i mean so it's like it's it's actually been going really well man and it's 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 been going good nice, you know? nice. yeah definitely yeah because it's like one of the things is like yeah you you have a great business and your food is delicious by the way thank you but it's thank also you. about building that community too and yeah. going, putting it out there yeah. and you and we talked right before we started recording we were talking about the idea of you creating like being part of another like platform for artists to perform and people stuff yeah. like that definitely man yeah so like uh we uh recently we started uh throwing an event called oxnard vibes okay. at a uh, casa agria in uh, oxnard and it's just a local brewery you know and uh the owner's real cool shout out to mike and it, like for us, you know, obviously we're we're not musicians, you know what I mean? We're not rappers, we're in no sense any of that, but it's just we're we're fans of that. And coming out to the IE so often, like this shit is like a home to us. It's our second home. Yeah. And like seeing the opportunity and seeing the platform that everybody creates, you know, Noah and Lisa and Brick to Your Face and just everybody. And like I really want that in Oxnard. We want that in Oxnard. Yeah, it's yeah. like there's so much fucking great talent in Oxnard. And like to me, like, we're lacking a platform, a consistent platform. Not saying, like, there's, you know, you might get three a year, maybe four a year. But it's, like, for a city like Oxnard, we should be like the IE. Yeah, yeah. Fucking weekly, fucking whatever, two, three times a month, like, type shit. Like, yeah. the fact that we don't have that, it, it's, I mean, fuck, bro, like, it, we need that shit. And exactly. then also on the backside, like, we also can grow our brand, you know? So it's also, like, all these shows we're setting up. You know, giving out samples of our cookies and all that too. So it's like, it's like everybody wins. You know, exactly. everybody gets a platform. You know, everybody can get better. That's like the main goal. You know, we're yeah. not trying to sh- throw a show where we're selling out 
selling fucking fifty dollars tickets yeah. type shit. We're like, nah, man, like ten dollar tickets. This money's going back to the artists. We're here to sell our shit and fucking just come to get better. Exactly. So when people do come out to the bigger platforms out in IE and out in LA and they're repping Oxnard, they're ready. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like. Like, you know, come out to Thought Fest. Come out to these shows out here, but just be ready. Don't fucking sing over your lyrics. Yeah. Don't fucking skip over your shit because you forget your songs. Yeah. So, like, that's part of it, too, is, like, giving the platform so when you are stepping out of, like, Ventura County in the 805, you're dope. You're yeah. repping that shit. You know what yeah. I mean? And people like, have to be prepared because, like, you can create this platform. You can give them that opportunity, but if they're not taking advantage of that, like, yeah. that's that's where it's frustrating yeah. sometimes. Where it's yeah. like, bro, like, I'm trying to get... Put a pop, put a good name to where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. this platform, like this is not a joke, man. Like yeah, exactly. I, 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 like I get it. People do this shit as like a hobby and all this shit, but it's like, take this shit seriously. You can enjoy it, but just take this shit seriously, mm-hmm. man. Like we're here to be better. We're here not to work for somebody. Like I'm here to make sure or help you not to have to clock in for somebody. Exactly. You're an artist and you want to build your brand. Well, then here you go. Yeah. Just come ready. You know what nice. I mean? It doesn't mean you got to be perfect. It doesn't mean you're not going to fuck up. But just don't come at this shit like it's some fucking party, like it's some joke. Yeah. You know? And, like, oh, that's that's kind of an issue, too. It's like a lot of people t- think this shit's like, oh, this is dope. Let's just come through, do a performance, blah, blah, blah. It's like, bro, you missed out on all these connections you could have met, mm-hmm. you know? Like, yeah. we're bringing out, like, big people from the IE, you know? Like, Noah James is coming out to Oxnard. Mm-hmm. And this dude's an open book. Yeah. And if you like, I told my homies like, bro, if you did not come say what's up to that fool, like you fucked up. You missed an opportunity. Like you missed an opportunity. Like he will be back out here, but like I can't stress that enough. Like if you have people, go say what's up, man. Shoot the DM. Like the worst shit that's gonna happen is you're gonna get ignored. Yeah. And the fuck but at least is that? You tried. Yeah. Like what the fuck is that? You're gonna forget about that shit in like a week. Yeah. You know, and like that's like the main, like the whole thing we. The originality we, when when we met Noah James the first time, it was like we just met him at a at a show at a in a where was it a uh, eclectic in Ball Heights. Mm-hmm. It was the East of the River show, and like bro, we were just like I just said, what's up, bro? Here's some here's some product, blah blah blah. We're like we, me and my girl were fans of this fool, yeah. and like from there it like took off. We did products together, we did all this shit together. Yeah, and like, and I, I, that's the reason I met you is because yeah, of that. yeah, <laughs> bro, and like that, like that's a major, major fucking pillar of our business and our brand is knowing Lisa the Brick mm-hmm. to Your Face movement because it's like without them, like shit, bro. Like as much as love I got for Oxnard the 805, it. I'm just, I just want to word this correctly, like. Mm. People are very like cutthroat. They don't. If you're succeeding more than somebody out there, they generally don't want to see you succeed. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean like they're generally trying to bring you down, but they're not trying to help you out. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how it is, and like that's just that's what it no, is. And that happens you know what even I mean? in Orange County too. Yeah. Say, you know like, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think it, it. And like coming out to the IE, like it's exact opposite. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're not even from here, bro. And like people treat us like we're fucking. We went to elementary school. Yeah. Like, it's fucking wild, bro. Like, and like, I want to bring that to Oxnard. I'll bring the opportunity and like, that's part of the Oxnard vibe shit. It's like, have people opportunity to grow. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Just like how everybody's doing out here, you know? Yeah. No, and I feel the passion, man. And it's true. Like, it's just about building that, building that community and we can do it wherever we're at. I mean, I, in one of the interviews on this episode, I was talking to Cam Gnarly and how, he chose to like represent where he's from and like rep that more and that that brought a lot of attention and respect because it's like that's what you got to do you got to start from where you're from yeah yep definitely man it's like no matter where you're from there's already history that you can kind of give homage to you know what i mean like that's that's the thing too it's like you're not the first you're not the best just give homage to that and find you know find your piece of pie cut that piece out and fucking run it yeah. You know, whatever it is, don't don't fucking be too greedy. Give more than you get, and fucking you'll be all right. Yeah. You know? Well, well, that's great, man. Well, thank you for talking to me about this. If they want to follow more, uh, where can they? They're still there in the mix on yeah, Instagram, yeah. but what about the the platform itself? Is, is that where they can go to? Yeah, uh, yeah. R I G uh, Stone Dar in the Minx, or also our cookie website, Stone Dar the dot com. No end. Yeah. But uh, yeah, feel free to hit us up on IG. Give us a follow, and then uh. The next Oxnard Vibes, this is actually the first time we'll be announcing the date for uh, Oxnard Vibes Volume 3. Nice. will be December 14th at Casa Agria. 
It'll be uh, Noah James is coming through. He got a birthday tour coming up. I don't even know if he announced that yet, so just keep that between us. <laughs> <laughs> but just know, come out to Oxnard. It's going to be fucking dope. And yeah, man. December 14th. We'll December be there. 14th, man. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, man. Come through, man. You guys got space to boost, set up, record some shit. Nice. You know what I mean? We'll make it we'll make it something nice. So well, Aaron, thank you so much. Uh Stone Dart in the Mix, continued success. Thank you, thank awesome you. Awesome business. Thanks. Appreciate you, man. And we have one of the performers that just killed it right now on stage, Champagne Aramis. What's up, man? Hey, what's happening with you, man? Hey. Big old deal. Hey, there, you just killed it up there. You had some dope beats, great good songs. Looking. One thousand good hey. looking. I definitely appreciate that. Uh, how do how do you feel it went? Like how did you what energy did you come into this event with? Uh, I came I came in with some confidence. I came in feeling like, you know, we finna have a good night. Like, you know, the tour already looked like it was going good. So yeah. I definitely rocked the show with them earlier just like two months ago or a month ago. Gotcha. But it's been a vibe, so I knew tonight was gonna end off real smooth like it did. So yeah, it's, uh, well, the thing about you, yeah, like like the tour says, it's like very majestic, very positive. Like those are two very me? positive you people, Cam Gnarly and Noah James. What? Uh, how did you how did you meet them, or how did you get involved with them? Uh, I met uh, Cam Gnarly and Noah James. I want to say twenty twenty two. So it was a uh, they threw an audio dope, mm-hmm. and before they threw the audio dope, they had like an open mic, and then from there they kind of just wanted to progress with me. I appreciate yeah. them for sure. One thousand. So June twenty. 20- 22. Yeah, a couple years that ago. That was like, you know, the introduction between Champagne Aramis and Noah James and Cam Gnarly. That's dope. Good times, bro. Yeah. And they've been very majestic and very positive the whole time, the whole ride. And I'm yeah. fucking with it. That's, yeah, that's the thing about, like I was saying, those guys, they just give artists a chance to like Man, grow and definitely. like they see what they, they believe in you and they give you that opportunity. Yeah, and that's what it was too off the yeah. dribble. It was like, it was love. It was like real welcoming. Yeah. And then ever since then, I'm just like, yo, tuned into whatever they got going. If it's like a new song, a new video, a tour, an open mic, yeah. open up for them, headline for them, whatever they want me to do. I'm just down with it. Nice. Shout out to, shout out to them. Uh, so tell us Sir. about you, man. How did you get started making music? How long ago did you start? Man, I, I jumped into it mentally as a kid like you know just enjoying like listening to what i listen to even just individually from like my mom my dad my brothers and sisters like they all gave me like a piece of something Mm -hmm. but i started actually like portraying like the artist champagne aramis before i was just christopher that's my real name yeah yeah so i started kind of just going to champagne aramis and giving stories of christopher and champagne which is my stage name but Aramis that's my middle name yeah, yeah. and just kind of just you know wanting to give an experience in my story in it and in 2020 it was like COVID so I'm one of them quarantine rappers yeah, I kind of oh, so just came out and kind of just kept vibing and shit you know so yeah. people are like yo you rapping too like and they've been knowing me for years but it's like yo this sounds good keep going so yeah. the motivation and the feedback kind of keeps me pushing and 2020 when it was that moment and I'm yeah. like alright I'm fucking with it were there artists at the beginning or even now that you look to where you're like I want to do it like them or they inspire my journey along the way uh, I would say it would be like the listening experiences earlier so like the originality of like DJ Quick Ice Cube writing all that shit up for the NWA like yeah. you know just Snoop Dogg being original like I was really fucking with it and then even like a newer vibe of like Dom Kennedy's telling like a certain story or yeah. even like a, a price tag from Rialto's and I'm from Rialto so gotcha. that kind of just the storytelling brings a lot of inspiration to me so any artist that kind of got like a storytelling it brings light to my my storytelling nice nice so so are your songs like do you write them all from your perspective or do you tune other people you know like their stories into it mostly my perspective but like the people near to me i kind of can dive into their perspective of it because they tell me stories or they call my phone and it's like yo want to tell me about their day or maybe i'll just call them and ask them about their day so yeah. that brings like some some inspiration to kind of just express a different perspective but still kind of not dive too far it's like you don't know what you're talking about like gotcha. i know what i'm talking about with these people like they tell me these things or yeah you can feel the connection you feel me them, it's man. like more natural more organic and i'm like all right okay That's i dope, can express man. that in my own song like yeah, it like makes you want to open up more. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so uh, yeah, so what do you think of the music scene out here? Like, I, where what music scene do you usually like hang out with? Or like, uh, I'm tuned into the nine for sure. Nine oh nine. I'm definitely tuned into LA, which is close to home, and it's yeah. like all right, Bay Area. I love like how they sample things and they kind of just keep it rocking at their tempo. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, yeah. So just enjoying the listen and not trying to like mimic or do what they're doing, but just yeah. enjoying it and then. Yeah my own storytelling can bring like some some light to 
you know, maybe somebody from fucking Montana might be like, hey, I like this IE artist. Like, yeah. and it's like, oh, they like my storytelling or what I'm talking about. Yeah. Just the way I'm kind of coming off. A lot of great talent it's in the IE, It's smooth, man. though. It's definitely a lot of talent in the IE. And I'm, I'm looking forward to just, you know, growing with them and definitely, like, pushing them as well. Yeah. Like, I want to make sure that, you know, my section eats as well. Like, I'm yeah. pretty sure they look like, oh, it's hard to get to where we're trying to get to, but just keep going. Like, you yeah. know, it's a turn for everything, you know. Yeah, well, keep pushing, man. Uh, is there anything are you looking forward to the rest of this year? Are you working on something? I'm just vibing, man. I'm having a good time for sure. I've definitely been working on a lot of music. <clears throat> Excuse me. i um, been rocking with my dog, Chef Keys. He's definitely a talented engineer, producer, uh, mentor, DJ. Like, he does a lot. And we just actually dropped an uh, EP, a five song EP called nice. The Taster. It's a good vibe. It's on Bandcamp right now. You pay what you want, you know. Whatever you feel like it's worth, take give it a listen. Yeah. And then from there, kind of just keep going, progressing, you know, just decide if you want to pay for it or not. Yeah. Um, I've been diving in, which is music with Parrish Walker. She's super amazing. You got to yeah. check her out on whenever you get a chance. She's, she was on your set today. Yeah. She was on my set tonight. Yeah, yeah. she definitely, um, she rocked that so good. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I love man. that song. I ain't going to cap. <laughs> <laughs> well, continued success, man. Tell them where they can follow you online, uh, where they can check out your stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, you can follow me on Champagne Aramis. On all music platforms, wherever you listen to music, Champagne, A-R-A-M-I-S. If you want to follow me on social media handles, my handle is Aramis Baby, A-R-A-M-I-S-B-A-B-Y. Um, shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate it. It's a good vibe, man. Thank y'all yeah, for Cam for Gnarly here. and Noah James, the very majestic, very positive tour. Tonight was lovely. Shout out to the Exhibit Gallery, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Aaliyah Zinn, how's it going? It's going good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for uh, doing this event. Um, we reached out to you at the Rodriguez Show on Instagram to see if mm -hmm. you could do this. And uh, thank you for doing such a dope set. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to be a part of the last leg of Noah and Cam's tour. So that's awesome. Yeah, shout out to those guys, man. Mm -hmm. They're always uh, they're always great to see them perform. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, I feel like I talked to you years ago on Anum in the AM. Shout out to Anum. Um, how you been in these past few years just making music? Man, making music, living life. I think that I definitely had to take a step back from being out on the scene to kind of live life and gather more experiences that um, a lot of the new music that I'm putting out, even though it's old to me, is basically touching on all of that. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You just released Cobwebs and Egos, uh, which is a project that dropped last week. People can check that out on all streaming. Yes. Listen to it. It's dope. Thank you. You performed like one of those tracks up yes. here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what went into the making of that? Cobwebs and Egos, I was kind of just like, this year I need to put out some new music, even though it's older to me. And so it's a compilation of like songs that have been in my archives for years. Um, hence cobwebs and uh, egos goes into play because I think that um, my ego played a large role in not putting out music over the years just like having it to be meticulous and everything had to be perfect and so I was like you know what cobwebs and egos these songs have been collecting dust I really want them out um, so it's fitting to put out on the first day of fall and entering yeah. into October so yeah I hope everybody enjoys them nice it's just like the start of like a new new phase for you you would say yeah i think definitely it's kind of like letting go of all of the old from the past couple of years and then moving forward into a new chapter but i felt like i didn't want to put out newer content without letting people that listen to my music in on some of the older music that they've been wondering where it's been because i've just been sitting on it so yeah. it's definitely like putting out the older stuff and now like me moving forward into a new chapter and era yeah what does that look like for you I think it looks like if you listen to Cobwebs and Egos, it's very like much melodic tones and different styles that I was trying during that time. And so moving forward, I feel like I'm going to dive deeper into like my roots of boom bap and grittiness and just um, where I started, basically. Because gotcha. I started on like Cypher Effect and, you know, just bars, basically. So I definitely want to like move forward channeling into all of that. More melodic mm -hmm. and stuff. That's dope, man. You see that evolution already happening with that project. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so what did, what sparked the love of music to begin with? I think just like needing a channel to express myself, and so once I realized, oh, like not everybody can do this. Not everybody can write how I write or sound how I sound. I was like, this is something that I want to do. So I can't even believe it's been like, you know, 
10 plus years of creating music and all of the different chapters that come with that, I think that I had to kind of like step away from music for a while because I was losing my passion and my love for it. Yeah. Um, and so now it's dope having Noah and Cam bring me out and you bring me out for this show because it's rekindling the reason why I even created music, which is the connection that I just experienced with everybody here tonight and just sharing that content. So yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think that remembering why I started, even you asking me now, it's because having that place to channel um, what I'm feeling in my experiences. Gotcha. Has it gotten easier to like put all those feelings into music over the years? I think it it has gotten easier. I mean, even just like like songwriting, structuring a song, arrangement, um, all of that is something that is learned. So now that you know I've picked up all of these different tools, I think that it's kind of just like you have to live life to talk about those experiences. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing where you go from here and for you to continue yeah. living your life. Um, just last thing before, because I like to ask people this sometimes. Yeah. What was the last thing you either read a book, watched a movie, saw a TV show that inspired you? Um, I've been reading The Power of Now, which mm-hmm. is inspiring me because it's just reminding me to be here right now. Um, and TV show... Mm, well, it could just been one of whatever. It didn't have to be. Yeah, all the yeah, definitely power the power of now. of now because it's important to realize that that's all we have. Exactly. Well, uh, tell people where they can find you online uh, on your Instagram and stuff. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Aaliyah X Zin, A L I A X Z I N. Um, you can find me on YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Music, Aaliyah Zin, no X. Nice. And uh, yeah, well, this will be the first of many conversations we hopefully have on the show. Yes. Hopefully uh, excited to see you evolve. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Hey, of course. And we're back. <laughs> I've been. I, it's been a minute since I was It's been a minute since yeah, we, we, yeah. we haven't talked in a while, huh? Oh, man, there's so much to catch up on. <laughs> I, gotta, I actually got to come back out here. Uh, I'll be dropping again, but this this uh, this album run has been crazy. Yeah, yeah. I put out an a, a album out in December gotcha. of 2023 called North End Arley, <laughs> and I put it out right just to get, just to have something to run into in January, yeah. February. And in March, the city yeah. of San Bernardino gave me a citizen award from the oh, mayor's shit. office for that particular album yeah, yeah. and just like you know just just giving life into the downtown area for the events that's that I so dope down man there. yeah man shout out to san Marino. they yeah. uh i mean i feel like i always try to empower the dino but it's it means a lot to for them to give it back to me and um you know shout out to, them, to you know the mayor helen tran and my homie um uh ben reynoso who's a city councilman of the north yeah. end of san Marino. so uh yeah it was blessed it was a blessing man i i, I re- it's kind of surreal because i'm really from the dino so yeah yeah growing up over there and getting that love back from the community is really empowering and i feel like it just set the tone for the for the whole year because that oh, was yeah. like march yeah that so, march of this year yeah yeah march damn so it's and then you went on this tour and now you're yeah like, yeah we did the uh, the tour in august too so yeah the album came out in december I dropped a visual to go with it called uh, Blessed With Stress With that was doing numbers on YouTube. Yeah. And then my homie, uh, who's the city councilman, hit me to help with his campaign because uh, yeah. he's from the North End. The, the North, he's the city councilman of the North End, so the album being called North End Arley. Yeah. Uh, the intro song's called Dino USA, so that that garnered a lot of attention yeah. as well. And then it was dope for the city to, to give it back up to me in March. And then after that, probably in like May and June, I, did, uh, I got to curate a whole stage for LA County Fair. Damn, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did that. I did LA County Fair. I got into my DJ bag. Yeah. I wanted to find a way to give people the music without necessarily having to perform it. I just wanted to like create community around the music. So yeah. uh, I DJed for the Ontario Art uh, Arts and History Museum. I, I performed at the Cheech Museum in Riverside That's dope, for Cheech dude. Moran's museum. A brand new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was crazy. And I, I was really one of the first black artists in there because it's a Chicano uh, museum. So I felt really honored to uh, to be asked to perform because I was a part of uh, another song from the album got put in the film festival, the Inland Empire Film Festival. Yeah. So they it was dope too. That, that happened in like April. Um, doing both of those shows, I did the Cheech I DJed Ontario in, in, in February. I got the award in March. I performed at the Cheech in May. Yeah. And then I did uh and then the 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 um, I did the LA County Fair in June 
And then in July, I was uh, they had the film festival for one of the visuals from <laughs> North and Gnarly at the movie theater in the city. Yeah. And then we did the tour in August, um, and I dropped a visual for Dino USA right before we hit the road. So it's been a – this album has uh, – changed my life and even more so it's so much about my life that it's so yeah. interesting to see the community give it up and give it back so i feel hella blessed what what do you think and we're doing this now this is cam gnarly we're here at the oh, yeah. gallery Hi, Fullerton. i just I, we we're already in the conversation oh, yeah. i, I want to know like was there a shift in the way you're creating or your mentality that led to this like was there a different way you did this uh yeah i mean i try to do everything intentionally for yeah. sure but i went through so many changes of like ending of friendships and ending of spaces that I was in, relationships, where I really felt like I had something to prove to myself uh, and what I wanted to do next. And a lot of it had to do with, uh, you know, we all went through the cultural reset of COVID mm -hmm. in 2020, and I had released two projects in that time, uh, 333, HZ, and Love Really Is. And um, by the time I started working on North and Arley, I was just in another place. I wanted to take songs that people knew me for and turn that into a full-fledged album. So I had songs like The Nine that people knew me for that was a representation of the community, but that's just one song. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have an album that really represented where I come from where people be like, oh, this this Cam Nard, he's from the North End of San Bernardino. Yeah. So when I chose to make an album about that and have North End Gnarly be the title, I was very intentional with all of the 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 art direction and the visual direction to represent the Dino. If you look at the album cover, it is a, a amalgamation of what downtown San Bernardino used to look like when we had the uh, the Route 66, and you see just all this crowd of people walking. What is our our version of Third Street? Mm -hmm. And if you squint your eyes, you can see me in the cover. <laughs> and that was my intention to yeah. that. That when people thought of. The community I wanted to I wanted to brand myself with my community. Yeah. I want to start back at home and water the roots. So mm -hmm. to be able to do that and have this project represent me, uh, that was super intentional. And then after that, just every single visual has had a piece or shot in a portion of San Bernardino. Um, you know, yeah. so, and from there, just I received just so many blessings from the community, from the mayor's office. Yeah. I had meetings with like uh, our, you know, our in and out of our community bakers reached yeah, yeah. out, and just so many other people just in the space of just feeling like, you know, what it feels like to get bigged up for your for your particular area. So, is there, uh, is there pressure in in having that like platform of like, okay, now the people that are making a difference in my community are listening to me? Not necessarily, because yeah. um, I feel like I I, I was prepared for it this yeah. is what i wanted yeah. like i wanted the people in my community to understand that i was being very intentional with putting on for mm -hmm. where we come from so knowing that it worked and i got their attention that's exactly what i asked for so it's yeah. not so much a pressure it's it, it just i feel like i'm putting pressure on them yeah, you know what i'm saying to to for us to come together in in that way so and i felt so honored in in reference to like the city council yeah. uh giving me that award because that they give that to business owners they give yeah. that to they give that to you know townspeople who have been the ceos of their business or for over some odd years and i've been making music for 10 years but just to be recognized not only for my artistry but just for what i've given to the community as far as like throwing events and just taking dino wherever i go san Bernardino. yeah uh yeah so not so much a pressure but it's kind of like a full circle of the what i manifested where it was a conversation between me and my friends and then to see it come back around it was like wow we couldn't even have yeah. I like I wrote down what I wanted, and then God just kind of gave the rest all, all the the gray area where I was like I didn't even know this could be possible. Yeah. So, but it does make me excited to do more mm -hmm. uh, for the community, and also it's like a mission accomplished. Like y'all yeah. know where I'm from now, yeah. so now I can do the next thing because yeah. the roots are solidified. So now where can we take it next? Where are we gonna grow to? Did you really write it down? Like yeah, yeah. Much yeah. of uh, I didn't write down like. Um, the mayor yeah. and all that stuff. But what I did write down was like, oh, I want to brand myself and my music with my community. Yeah. So this album will be called North and Arley and it will represent my experiences growing up on the North End of San Bernardino and San Bernardino as a whole. So everything was going to be a representation of the Dino. So if you look at the album cover, everything that we pulled from was old postcards and stuff like that. I wanted the album to be yeah. like a postcard to the rest of the world from where I'm from. Yeah. And... Uh, 
like I said, like we wrote we wrote down like what we wanted. Where it's like, oh, we should we should link with these people, link with these people, like you know, align ourselves and what me and my team were doing musically with some of the brands that inspire, you know, revitalizing the community or looking at where we come from differently. So, um, damn, mm-hmm. it, some of it was written down. Certain people who reached out, like Baker's reaching out and all that, that was definitely written down. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was going to look like. A lot of it, but much of what we wrote down in essence of just saying like, you know, it's kind of like saying your prayers, you know, yeah, like, you, you know, just bring, please, you know, show me how good it could get. I, I, I've i been blessed to see how good it could get. Yeah. Damn. And I've seen that shift for you in you over the years, just following you, like your music. And it just feels like once you embrace like your surroundings, it's like you find where you're at. Kind yeah, of. yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I, I mean, I've been saying it so long this year, I, I've gone through so much stuff, but I feel incredibly blessed, man. Like just, on, on an emotional level where it's like, man, I, I didn't cried about these things. I didn't, you know, fought about these things, argued about what these intentions were. And uh, and now I get to do it, you know, and seeing it come into fruition. And this tour is an example of that, you know, so Dope, man. very majestic, very positive. Uh, I can't think of anywhere to leave it at because you have to go on stage right now. I think yeah, you're next. Yeah, I think I'm next. I'm <laughs> on right, next. Thank you yeah. so much, Cam. Thank Harley. you, man. Hey, let me know when I can come back up hey, here. Anytime, bro. I got we'll a new album coming out really soon, but until then, man, North and Gnarly, tap in with me. I'm going to hit the hey, stage. Thank you, Cam Gnarly. He'll be on the show, too, once again soon. Yeah, yeah. Very majestic. Very positive. Very positive. You heard me. And we are back on the Rodriguez Show. I got Ray is here with me hanging out at the exhibit gallery in mm-hmm. Fullerton in the mm-hmm. podcast room like we've been doing all episode. How you feeling, man? Good, bro. I haven't been out on Thursday like this in a, quite a while, <laughs> so I feel old, but yeah, this is dope. Yeah, shout out to everybody that's tuning in, uh, listening on Hits 101 Radio, everybody that's watching on YouTube. We recorded this on Thursday the 26th, and it is out a week later. It's the first episode for October because Mondo... Was supposed to be on vacation, but he's recovering right now. He's sick. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Mondo once again. Uh, speedy recovery. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, man, how did you feel today seeing all the artists? Dope, man. Honestly, giving me like little flashbacks and shit. Like, obviously, I'm, for those that are listening, I I used to be part of this like you know underground hip hop scene and shit. And um, it's been quite some time. Uh, <laughs> but being back in this environment is pretty dope. Yeah. You know, just getting to feel like the like the grunginess, the rawness, the the microphone not sounding how it's supposed to, you know, shit yeah. like that. Like that's just all part of like the culture I feel and it's yeah. It's good to be back here. <laughs> Obviously things get fixed, don't get me wrong, guys. Yeah, <laughs> but but it's like, good to feel like, you know, the, the, the technical difficulties all part of the ride. Like, exactly, for sure, for sure. It feels raw, it feels it feels real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I like it. Shout yeah. out to everyone that's already, you know, gone on. They've done great mm-hmm. keeping this uh, underground movement alive. That's dope. Yeah, shout out to everybody that performed today. Shout out to Noah James and Cam Gnarly, the mm-hmm. tour that they're on. This is the final stop, so if I, they brought us here to do this, that's pretty dope. For sure, dude. It's always a blessing, and the fact that they keep you in mind for this for these kind of things, like, dude, nice. shows. That shows, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, shout out to Exhibit Full- Gallery in Fullerton. We might be using this room more often. Um, because it's so cool in here, man. It's just, it's just, I'm, I feel cool without having to use my hands and shit. Like, For sure, no, it feels a lot more laid back relaxed. and stuff. Not like, uh, of like a, what is Formal, it like? like yeah, 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 over a over a desk and stuff. You yeah, know, like exactly. no, this feels super laid back. Get to cross my legs like a gentleman. <laughs> Left, <laughs> right, left, right, left. I don't know, dude, but it feels good. <laughs> All right, Ray. Well, thanks for co-hosting with me today, man. For sure, bro. Always uh, a pleasure. Yeah, if you missed any of it, you're listening on, on the radio, hit, go to youtube.com slash so you can watch the full video, Ray is, and everybody else that I mm-hmm. talked to today. And uh, for now, keep it funky, keep it fresh, keep it sexy, and mm-hmm. we out. Yes, sir.